boxers that they're watching in the arena, they see that shot of Judah. Judah's been away from the sport a whole year, Lennox, as the result of his suspension after the uh, riot that was prompted in the ring following his two fouls against Floyd Mayweather last April to come back and then fight a sort of tune-up opponent and go in against Cotto is not an easy assignment. Well, I'm sure he's been in the ring, in the gym, and uh, I know he's been working hard, so we should see good things from him when he comes back. And here, as Larry Merchant said earlier, Oktai or Cal getting a chance to land big punches against Miguel Cotto, and Cotto just walking through them for the right to keep throwing and firing away to the body. Unlike the occasion at 140 pounds where he traded punches with Ricky Torres and got himself in big trouble, Cotto's able to take these punches very well. He's gotten hit on the chin, right on the button two or three times in this round and just kept coming forward. Go ahead. This is turning out to be a more spirited fight than the first one, which was expected to be the action fight. Incidentally, you heard Harold Letterman tell you before the fight that there will be open scoring after the fourth and eighth rounds, so they'll announce the scores in the arena after the fourth and eighth rounds. Hey, go on. Stop, go, stop, stop. Some people like it, I guess. One of those interesting pieces of boxing politics because the governing body which sanctions this fight is not interested in open scoring. It's another governing body that wants to do it. It's the local commission here which decided they wanted to do it tonight. Scores are probably going to show that Miguel Soto has won the round. Which isn't going to come as a mystery to anybody. Good hard left to the jaw inside by Cotto. And the body shots again. You listen to the crowd, ooh and ah, uh, for the body shots of Cotto. And Urkel comes back with a couple of right hands to the body as if to say, hey, I can hit to the rib cage too. You know, very often body shots are ignored stop, stop, stop. not only by the crowd hey, but even listen, officials listen, listen. but Cotto's okay. body listen shots me, okay. can't be ignored by anyone <laughs> well no. you, you know the funny thing about body shots hitting the body head. if you hit the body it comes from the old school when you hit the body the head dies and even if a tall if you're boxing a taller opponent and you hit the body all of a sudden that taller opponent becomes shorter it becomes your height well it was Joe Fraser who uttered that you know Kill the body and the head will follow. Who was the toughest body puncher you ever fought, Lennox? Out. Ray Mercer? Ray Mercer did, gave me a great fight. He was throwing some great body shots, but I was coming back. I would say, you know, it would have to be Evander Holyfield, Ray Mercer. Good uppercut by Koto there, catching Urkel. Almost lifted him off the canvas, but Urkel came back with a combination. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Two. All right, nice and deep. You all right? Come on. Take a deep breath. You have to hit him more. I want you to hit him lower. Ladies and gentlemen, the score totals after four rounds. All three judges scored about 40 to 36. Four. From Did, Miguel Cotto. Didn't somebody For win the Cotto. round? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Michael. Yes, from Miguel Cotto. Well, what a shock. <laughs> All four judges, or all three judges scored 40 to 36 so far from Miguel Cotto. Now, Harold, you get to chime in. How, How do you, you score it? I, I think that's outstanding ju judging by judges A, B, and C. 40 to 36 is absolutely the correct score. Miguel Cotto hammering away at Octay Urko with those shots to the body that are making me say, ouch. Uh, I mean, just vicious shots to the body. I don't know how Urko can stand there and trade with him, but he is. The, the kid's doing an amazing job hanging in there. Four to nothing, 40 to 36 Cotto. And this is why open scoring is a horrifically bad idea. Whatever suspense might have existed in the arena has now been eliminated, and Uktai Urkal has no adjustment that he can make that would change things anyway, other than to get desperate and give himself more of a chance to get hurt. Right, Lennox? 
<laughs> right. I don't, I don't think in this case it makes a whole lot of difference. Stop, stop, stop. Oh, I just still think it's a horrific idea whether it makes a difference or not. Everybody in the arena and in the ring knows what the score of the fight is. Right. To be fair, I, I like the suspense. I don't like to know. That I agree with. Round five, and you know, a lot of the question now is how long can Oktai Urkal hold out and fight bravely okay, okay. and show spirit and show his resolute courage against what is becoming a thudding beating to the rib cage by a rib cage beater, Miguel Cotto. Okay, okay stop. Now Nobody their heads butt against okay. each other, and Cotto kind of grimaces as if to say that didn't feel good. Urkel sticks the jab. Cota goes back to banging away at his ribcage. Like a, a German in Lederhosen trying to climb up a mountain. Go ahead. Chopping left hand upstairs by Cota. Crowd responds with oohs and ahs to that. As much as they like the head punches, they respond even more enthusiastically when Cota digs that left hook to deliver. They know what they're watching. Urkel has to be careful here because every time he covers up, his head comes across his front foot, saying that his balance is, a, is in front of him. And that's very open for Koto to throw an uppercut. And Koto keeps throwing uppercuts. He's thrown both a left uppercut and a right uppercut stop, within the stop, past stop. 30 seconds of the fight. What about Cotto's potential height disadvantage against bigger welterweights like Williams and Cintron and Margarito? Lennox, do you think it's going Go ahead. to Go ahead. be significant? Well, it can be significant if he allows it to be significant. If he's able to get in there and get to the body, then it's not si significant because taller guys have a hard time in fighting, and that's where his advantage will be. Williams, inside. Williams would have as much as a 13-inch reach advantage. Oh, there was a clash of heads there, and... Cotto's Open. bleeding. Yes. And that's the second clash of heads in the round. You saw Cotto grimace the first time and not happy about this one. I told you. I told you it was going to happen. Check out my piece. One. Come on. Breathe deeply now. Deeply again. Okay, coming. All right, it's nothing. Don't worry about it. And here we're going to look at the butt. They were both throwing punches at the same time. And there it is, the clash of heads right there. Now here's a way that open scoring can affect the fight. That the fighter who has whose head is gashed by an accidental headbutt and knows the score of the fight, can uh, do a little dramatics. The fight is stopped. He's won the fight. Yet another potential bad effect of open scoring. Underlining my point again. Body shots again from Miguel Cotto. Urkel stopped only once in his career, that in the 11th round by Vivian Harris. This has become a sort of ongoing measuring stick for Cotto. Got Bronco out of there last year, much more quickly than anybody had ever been able to do before. Got Quintana out in the fifth round after Quintana had outboxed. Punching prospect Joel Julio of Colombia. Now with the blood flowing from outside his left eye, Cotto goes to work on trying to stop, finish stop. off Urkel. Yeah. Hey, second time. Hey, you give it. It's yeah. it's the bottom, okay? and yeah. Urkel's, Urkel's definitely sticking the head in there. Yep, and Luis Pabon is warming him. Now says he's warned him twice and is going to begin taking points for butts if it happens again. Incidentally, there's kind of a magic number in the sport. If you land 50% of your uh, power shots, uh, via copy box numbers, you're going to beat your opponent up. After the last round, you saw the numbers on your screen that indicated Miguel Cotto was landing exactly 
50% of his power shots. Urkel's not doing badly, landing 43% of his power shots. They just don't have as much power. If you look, look at Urkel, Urkel realizes that he's got that cut over his right eye. He's throwing punches towards that right, uh, left eye of, of Koto. So Koto switches southpaw to turn the eye away from him and make it harder for Urkel to hit that uh, leading eye. This is something Koto did against Quintana, a southpaw. He turned southpaw to create better punching angles and set up the power shot. He does it again here. But Urkel's still throwing that right hand. He's aiming for that, that eye. And that's why Koto has turned into this stance to turn the eye farther away from Urkel and make it harder for him to hit it. And incidentally, he's pretty doggone defective this way. Because, of course, as Larry Merchant pointed out, if he were to have fought in his natural style, he would have been a southpaw, fighting with his jab in this position and the power shot from the back shoulder like this. Harold, I have a question for you. Let's say... Koto's eye, which originally came from an accidental butt, gets significantly worse by punches. Is he is he TKO'd if he can't go on? If the original cut is caused by an accidental headbutt and it's beyond the fourth round, you go to the score cut, Larry. Let me see your face. You have something left. You can finish it. You have to move more. Come on, breathe deeply. Come on, don't let him do that to you. Come on, let's work it out. We're supposed to do it. Let's do it. Good job, good job. You're doing good. Move out, move out of those right hands. You gotta love the intelligence of Miguel Cotto switching to a southpaw stance to protect that left what? eye in the last round. Let's see if he does it again. Starts out in a conventional stance here. Of Ty Urkal's trainer, perhaps a little optimistic in saying, oh, he's got not, nothing left. I think you can finish him. Not really sure about that. Koto would seem to have plenty left, albeit blood around the left eye. Koto throwing a little bit more upstairs now, as if he's interested in perhaps shortening the distance between here and the end of the I'm fight. Here. Okay, now, no, now you're here, now. Nobody do. We're in the seventh of the scheduled 12 rounds, and it would appear that Koto has won all of the first six. We know that he won all of the first four on all three official judges' scorecard because they're using open scoring here. Now, Koto's got a good job. He needs to use it a lot more. Right now, he's trying to get inside and throw some power punches. Lands a left hook to Urkel's chin. No matter, no matter how much Koto pounds his body, Urkel okay, still stop, keeps stop. his gloves high, and he's trying to keep his elbows in, but it, he's protecting his face first. He's a well-trained fighter. There's Urkel putting that head in there again. I know the referee's going to warn him. Yep. Time, time. And this is going to be the point ahead. deduction. One point Lennox ahead. Lewis right on top of it. Two warnings prior to this, and now a point deduction for Urkel, who, of course, isn't in the fight on points anyway. If I've ever seen a meaningless point deduction, that was it. Okay, nobody throw, nobody throw. Oh, yeah, Urkel with a full swinging left hook and a wink yeah. at Lennox Lewis. Watch your head. Watch your head. Watch your head. Watch your head. This is a pretty good referee, Pabon. He sees all the same things that you see. Watch your head. Watch your head. Okay, nobody throw. Nobody throw. Watch your head. You know, the scoring is one-sided. 
the outcome seems ordained. If you didn't see the fight and you read the newspapers, it would just say that Cotto dominated a game German who just wasn't up to it. But Cotto's going to go home tonight knowing he was in a fight. Absolutely, <laughs> because Urkel is one of those 365 day a year athletes, typical of the European style fighter in this day and age. I mean, people can criticize European fighters for their supposed stand up style and mechanical quality, but the fact of the matter is they're in shape, they're intelligent, they know how to fight.